Today, we're gonna to go over the proper removal and reinstallation process of the valves on your AAA series pressure washer pump. To start, we're gonna to wanna to take some air and a rag and blow around the valve caps just to get the debris out and away so when we're removing the caps, we don't have any debris falling into the chambers. Then we're gonna use a 10 millimeter T-bar to remove the caps and get access to our valves. It is important to note the caps themselves because your lower caps and your upper caps are going to have different looks to them and sizes. The lower ones are going to be shorter, whereas the top ones are going to be longer. This reason is so that the valves, the cage on the bottom, if you notice, will be facing outward. The nipple on the cage fits inside this cap, whereas on the top caps, the cage is facing downward and in. So the caps press down on the base and the seat of the cap. After we have the front valve caps removed, we're gonna take a pair of pliers, um, reverse pliers as well, reach around the cage, and remove our valves. Uh, you may notice the cages may come apart from the seats. The seats are held in by an O-ring, so those O-rings can swell and they'll stick inside the opening. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we get every part and piece out. This includes the metal cap, plastic cap, spring, the seat and the O-ring. Once we have all the loose pieces, we wanna make sure we get those seats out. So take our reverse pliers, insert them into the center of the seat, and pull out. They are gonna have an O-ring on them, so let's make sure that the O-ring is on here, and if it's not, then we'll take a pick, go inside, and remove that O-ring. Now that we have the fronts off, we're gonna to move to the top and remove the top valves. Now onto the top valves, we're gonna take our 10 millimeter Allen, move our caps. And as I said earlier, as a visual representation of the differences, you will see the difference in the length of the valve caps themselves just because the tops are gonna to be orientated different. And as you can see from the valve, you can see the base of the seat where the cage is facing down. Using a set of reverse pliers, we're gonna go in between the seat and remove our valves. And again, they may come out in pieces and be on the lookout for that O-ring just to make sure that the O-ring is removed before we go back and install the new ones. Now that we have the valves removed on the top side and the front, we're gonna go through, blow, blow them out, clean out the area, make sure any debris doesn't settle down inside. Okay. 
Now that we have it blown out and cleaned out, it's time to install our valves. Each valve on the top side of the three, remember the cage is gonna be orientated down. We're gonna wanna make sure that we put a little bit of grease on each of the O-rings before installation. And before we put our caps on, we want to make sure that we seat these into place because just dropping them into place and putting the caps over top will run the risk of damaging the cages. So for that, we'll just take a socket that fits just inside, apply even pressure until you feel them seat into place. Now it's time to install our valves into the bottom and Remember just to grease that O-ring to lubricate that before putting it into place. And on the bottom, cage is gonna stay out. And we're gonna push that into its position. Again, like the top, these do not seat perfectly as you push them in. Now that we have the valves in place, it's time to seat them. So we're gonna take our socket that is just over the size of the nipple that puts even pressure on the cage to push that into place, ensuring not to twist it or damage it. Now that we have our valves in and before we put our caps on, we want to make sure that these caps are cleaned off. Over time, you're going to get some corrosion and buildup around the base, as well as clean up any of the Loctite that has settled onto the threads. I'm going to remove our O-ring first before doing so, so that we don't damage it during cleanup. And then taking a soft brush, going around, cleaning up the threads, and the base of the cap. Once we have that clean, we'll reinstall our O-ring onto the cap. Wipe it off of any excess debris. And then install it back onto the manifold. Now that all of our valves are in, we're gonna go through and reinstall our caps. And again, just make sure to clean up the threads on all your caps. And as far as reinstallation goes, the difference in the two caps, this is gonna be your lower cap. It's gonna be shorter and fatter where the upper cap is gonna have that longer stem and be a little bit narrower. So first, we're gonna to wanna to take some grease, lubricate the O-ring on each of our caps, and then put a good amount of Loctite 243 across the threads. That way it securely holds these in place. And the type of grease we use when we grease all these O-rings is gonna be a lithium-based grease. Just need to have something so that it properly lubricates these O-rings so you're not forcibly putting them in dry, which could potentially cause damage. Now that we have our valve caps in place, 
We're gonna go around to each of the six valve caps and properly torque them to spec. Spec is gonna be 15 foot pounds. So let's set our torque wrench to the proper specifications and fasten these down. And that's how you change the valves on your pressure washer pump.